The million dollar question on everybody's mind is this. The TRAPPIST-1 system containing seven planets orbiting a small red dwarf star about 40 light years away from the Earth, with three of those planets in the habitable zone, are they actually, you know, inhabited? Right? This is the big question. Like, is there life in the TRAPPIST-1 system? Feel free to watch the rest of the video or just stop now. The answer is we don't know. The Of the seven planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system, uh, one of them called 1E is the most... <clears throat> the one that has the best chances for life as we understand it. It has a, a size close to the Earth's. It has a density slightly larger than the Earth's, which means it doesn't have too much water or too much gas. It's mostly rocky, might have a thin atmosphere. It's in the habitable zone, but on the outer edge of it, somewhere between equivalent to what uh, Earth and Mars are. So somewhere between us in terms of the amount of radiation that it gets, which is just fine it's enough for the potential of liquid water um it there could be life on trappist 1e there could be it is certainly one of the most earth-like and hospitable places we've found in the galaxy but life around trappist 1e isn't exactly easy uh, and when we're answering these questions about habitability we have to look at the big picture we have to look beyond just the size of the planet or the density or the presence of liquid water one of the places we have to look is the star itself trappist one this star is an ultra cool red dwarf it's very very small less than a, it's about a tenth the size of the sun it is and all the planets, in order to be in that habitable zone, because it's so cool and so weak and so feeble, all the planets are crammed in nice and close, closer than Mercury orbits our own sun. But uh, red dwarf stars are very temperamental. They can flare like crazy out of nowhere. In fact, during our observations, where we've been studying these planets, we've seen multiple flares from the sun, some surging as much as 50% in brightness. So imagine if one day, randomly, the sun decided to be 50% brighter. That might be bad news, okay? That might be bad news for any life on the planet. And because they're so close to that star, the flares are that much worse worse like if a flare goes off and it's right in your face it's not gonna be fun also because of the extreme closeness and all these flares there's a lot more uv radiation than the earth gets from the sun uv radiation can break apart water molecules uh if you have life it can cause cancer it can mess up dna it's it's, it's just kind of bad news it's going to be harsh living that close to a star also because these planets are very small and they're orbiting so close to their star, they are going to be almost certainly tidally locked, where one side of the planet faces the star constantly, while the other side is locked in permanent night. So one side is going to be lit all the time, nonstop, while the other side is going to be unlit all the time, nonstop. So one side is going to be super hot, and one side is going to be super cold. So even though if they're in the habitable zone, on average, the temperature is just right for liquid water. On one side, it might be too hot for liquid water. And on the opposite side, it might be too cold for liquid water. Again, boiling water and frozen water are not good for life. Where life might find a home on these planets is the Terminator region, the halfway point, the the twilight, the permanent the permanent twilight on these planets. There's going to be ferocious winds, probably you know, hundreds of miles an hour winds that are racing from the hot side to the cool side constantly. The Terminators are very very thin strips of habitability on these planets. The planets may not be tidally locked because there might be complex gravitational interactions between the planets that pull them out of that uh, tidal locking resonance, but it's a little bit unlikely. 
maybe life could flourish and find a foothold and do all the things that life does on a tidally locked world, but we don't know. It's certainly anything unlike anything we've experienced on Earth, and this is our only example of life, so that's all we got to go on. If there life is life on Trappist 1E, it certainly involved in a very different set of circumstances than the Earth. But on the other side of the coin, the fact that it's a red dwarf star is very intriguing. This system, this system itself is twice as old as the solar system. So life has only had like 4 billion years on Earth to have get some chances going. And it may have been knocked down and it got back up again. TRAPPIST-1E has had twice as long for life to gain a foothold there. So if the conditions are right, there's been a lot of attempts. And maybe they got wiped out by a flare, you know, three billion years ago, but now life is rebuilding itself again. I don't know. And also, red dwarf stars last an extremely long time. Our sun is already halfway through its life cycle. It's only going to burn for another four to five billion years. And then life on Earth... It's going to be tough, but TRAPPIST-1E e is going to stay roughly the same temperature, roughly the same intensity for trillions of years. So hundred, tens, a hundreds of thousands of times longer than the sun has been around. So the TRAPPIST system might be dead now. But if through some combination of chemistry, life can start getting going, uh, it has a lot more chances over the next 10 trillion years than around a star like our sun. So even though life may be disfavored because of the harsh conditions, they get a lot more chances at the wheel. At the end of the day, is TRAPPIST-1E or any of the, the other TRAPPIST systems inhabited by life? We don't know. Hopefully with instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope, we'll be get, to get a better picture, more data, more information about the TRAPPIST system that might give us a clue as to the presence of life. And until then... We're just going to keep on wondering. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to keep all of my education and outreach activities going. And I'll see you next week. And say hello to our friends on TRAPPIST-1E if you get a chance.